I'm joined in studio by our resident doctor, Dr. Darren Green, and today we're talking about ringworm. Hello. Hello there. Today we're talking about ringworm. Sure. I sound very excited to be speaking about ringworm. I don't know why. Gross as many people aren't, obviously. It does gross a lot of people. Because I think there's a worm actually, you know, squirming around under the skin. Well, now's your chance to clarify that. Is there a worm? <laughs> the problem is people named it that, and it isn't actually a worm. It just looks like a worm. It's actually a fungus. You know, like athlete's foot, yeah, fungus. Yeah. It grows on your nails and on, the, on your skin. Mm. So that's what it is. And that's why the prime manifestation of ringworm is actually a skin manifestation. Uh, it just forms these what we call annular rings that looks like a ring. Uh, and they arrange in patches, yes, round patches. And uh, you can uh, obviously contract ringworm or get it from sand pits. Children love playing in the sand. And uh, we often get them from uh, dogs or cats. Why? So your pets. Because that's how the, 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 the fungus is actually transmitted. So if you think about touching uh, after scratching yourself mm. with the fungal cells, mm. like uh, athletes would have spread in a shower, for example, mm -hmm. it loves growing in uh, dark, moist places, as all fungus does. Yes. So you can imagine then that uh, with ringworm, exactly the same rules apply to eradicating it. Obviously, you look at the environment. You make the environment uncomfortable for the fungus to grow mm. in. The problem comes in with ringworm is when you've got such a, a high load of the fungus that it's, you know, you actually need to eradicate it from the blood and take systemic treatment to stop the fungal infection. And that you often need to take certain antifungal agents for up to four weeks. Does that happen to often to people who get ringworm? It can happen, uh, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, interesting that fungus loves sugar, by the way. It loves feeding on sugar. So stop eating sugar. <laughs> so you often find people with uncontrolled high sugars develop fungal infections like candida, etc., in diabetics. Mm. So coming back to ringworm, it's a specific fungus called tinea. Uh, and you get different varieties, tinea uh, capitis on the head, corporis on the human body, and so on. You get others in hairlines and so forth, under the arms, in the groin area, etc., that are all associated with these, uh, with these fungal infections. And uh, we need to obviously use topical creams uh, that are antifungal that you can put on the, on the lesions. And often that's good enough if you start early, before they've got a host and a, a whole catalog of lesions all over the body. Uh, where you'll then need four weeks of treatment with uh, something like myconazole. Now, if you don't use the topical treatment, is there a chance your body can fight it off and it will go away on its own? Often a fungal infection can be self-limiting mm. and die off. So yes, certainly there are fungal infections uh, that can die off uh, if you decrease your exposure to obviously reintroducing mm. it, uh, etc. And also the environment, as I mentioned, if you're controlling the environment in which it grows, better, mm -hmm. then uh, you, you decrease the chances of, of, of maintaining the infection. But there's also a chance it could spread. Yes, indeed. Uh, so okay. just like on, on the other skin, scratching it because it can be itchy, dry patches. And people don't like it, so they don't like showing or telling anyone about it. Children are often shy to show their parents skin lesions as well. So they hide them and then it gets worse and worse and worse and obviously the load of the fungus mm -hmm. becomes more and more and more and then you spread it. 